For the past couple of days, I've been charging this Smart for Two lithium battery off of my Chevy Volt lithium battery through this boost converter. I've got everything set up at, at the right voltage and we are ready to do the capacity test. So here we go. <laughs> You can see these BMSs have all stopped blinking. The voltages of all these cells are now perfectly in balance. Over here in the front, these three are still blinking. Now they're plus or minus 10 millivolts, so we have a, a swing here. Some of the cells are 4.04, some are up to 4.06. On average, it's 4.05, which is what I wanted. Uh, that is what I want to kind of set as the top limit for these batteries, which is 56.7 volts total. This here is the boost converter. It's drawing power from my battery bank, which is currently sitting at 47 volts, and it's been boosting it up to 56.7 volts. Now it stopped sending current because it got it to exactly 56.7, according to this device. So it has stopped and I'm going to go ahead and unscrew it. This is where I screwed it in here and I screwed it in over here on the circuit breakers. So we'll take that out and make sure that it doesn't start sending current again. I'm going to hook up an alternating current load so I'm going to go ahead and use this. Any of you guys who've been watching a while might recognize it. It was my very first inverter that I picked up for my DIY power wall. Uh, it's been replaced at this point, but this inverter still works and I'm going to use it for this test. Now this is a little watt meter. There's a 100 amp shunt and then this guy is going to read voltage and amperage and give us the watts and watt hours so it'll keep track accurately of how much electricity we pull from the battery. Now this is in between the inverter and the battery so it will take into account any inverter losses. That's right. The capacitors. I always forget about the capacitors. Alright, so that's good and tight. So this meter is reading 56.7475 volts. Now that's slightly higher than what I want, but I think it's probably within the uh, uh, the accuracy of these different cheap devices. So let's go ahead and try to reset this thing. There we go. So we just cleared that. Turn this on. And that jumped up. All right, so the inverter did kick itself on, cool. And there's no load, it's looking for one. This is a 100 foot extension cord, so I'll just plug this guy in. And the other end of the extension cord is plugged into the AC, and we'll just turn this guy on. I'll set it to 60 degrees, cool, and high speed. Now the air conditioner draws about 430 watts with the compressor and fan both on. Right now only the fan is on and the fan is about 60 watts and that leaves the rest with the inverter losses. So let's wait and see the compressor kick on. Also if you haven't noticed the BMS's have stopped balancing. They only balance, uh, they stop automatically balancing when you're drawing from them. So when we're charging again, they'll go back to balancing. All right, did you see that? The capacity test turned out even better than I expected. We got 11 kilowatt hours of usable capacity out of these batteries. Now, I wasn't expecting that much. Remember, 
these batteries were dead on arrival. When I opened up the case, we were showing cells with zero volts with, you know, a fraction of a volt. I mean, not very much. And we revived them successfully. We rearranged the cells. I removed all the ones that were bad. And this is a large usable pack. These are some of the bad cells that I removed out of the battery. They didn't make the cut. They wouldn't hold a charge or they self-drained. <laughs> The total capacity of this battery is going to be something higher than 11 kilowatt hours. But 11 kilowatt hours is what I was able to pull from the pack, which means we might have 14 or 15 kilowatt hours if you took it from 100% to 0%. I stopped the test and shut off the inverter when we had drawn exactly 11 kilowatt hours out of the pack. I was actually out here watching the meter, and when it went from 10 kilowatt hours to 11, I shut the system off. Now if you wanted the most capacity out of this, you could drain it a little bit farther down or you could charge it a little bit higher up, but by using the parameters of 3.5 volts per cell up to 4.05 volts per cell, you will get a long life expectancy. In some upcoming videos, we're going to talk about programming the BMSs, setting the parameters, and we're going to be putting the lid on this pack. We're almost done. Uh, I've been working on this battery for months and we are so close to being finished with it. Thank you all so much for watching and for your support. Please hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, check out the link to the Patreon. Uh, and I, I do link to products that I use through an affiliate link with Amazon and that really helps me out as well. If you can use those affiliate links, uh, then I get a little bit back from Amazon that helps support the channel. So thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I can't wait, <laughs> 11 kilowatt hours.